Hello, Andrew Dolan here from Northland Community and Technical College. I'm going to talk to you guys about VEX Coding Studio. I'm sorry, VEX Code V5 Text. Get it right. This is the replacement for VEX Coding Studio. So, uh, one of the first things you're going to want to think about here when you open this up is to go to your preferences and change where you're going to save things to. You can do that by clicking on here and I'd recommend that you create a folder somewhere where you know where it's going to be saved and you can change where it saves things to. So I've created this on the desktop and I've got a VEX code folder on my desktop that will be saving everything to. So hit OK and we should be all set. So that's going to be the location where your files are saved and you can change it from the default which is uh, under documents and whatnot. So um, for competition projects, that's mainly my focus today, we're going to go into um, open examples. And we want to start with the competition template. So I'm going to click on this competition template here and then hit next. And I'm going to call this Clawbot template. No spaces are allowed. And go ahead and hit create. Oh, project already exists. I'm going to create, uh, add a one to it. There you go. So this created a Clawbot template. And one of the things you really need to understand in this software is that it doesn't just create a file and then you can just email that file around. It creates a project and a project includes many files. So each of these is a different file. This vex.h, this robot configuration.h, the main, all of those are different files. And if we look at Windows, and where this is at, I go to my desktop, and here's this project I just created, the Clawbot Template 1. If you want to make this uh, transferable, bring it from one computer to another computer, you're going to want to take this entire folder. And inside that folder, you're going to find a number of files. But the thing is, again, if you want to bring it from one computer to the next, you want to grab this entire folder, copy that, and move it over, and that's the equivalent of the file. It's not just a single file like the uh, other software is used. So please keep that in mind. Alright, so one of the first things we're going to do in here is to set up our robot configuration. What's plugged into what? So if we click on this robot configuration, there's also a little icon up here that looks like one of the motor ports or one of the smart device ports. We're going to go ahead and start adding stuff to this. I'm going to add a controller done. And again, I'm, uh, there are other things that can be done in the software. Um, I'm doing it uh, trying to avoid some of the drivetrain, uh, smart drivetrain devices that are in there because um, you can set that up, but it's only good for a two motor drivetrain. So I don't want to worry about that. I've, a lot of the competition robots might have more than that. So we're just going to do it kind of an old school way. Add devices, motors, and we just click on this to configure, I'm sorry, you have to assign the ports first. That's the very first thing. So in mine, I've got a four motor drive on my Clawbot and port number 11. Um, I've got my left front wheel. And that should be all set, done. Keep adding devices here. Port number 12, I've got the left rear wheel. Again, no spaces are permitted in here. Done. Motor. Um, my right side I've got on ports 19 and 20, so 19 is my right front wheel. And I, I'm not sure if these are going to be reversed or not. I got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. And another one for port number 20 is my right rear wheel. Done. Okay, I've also got a claw on 17. Done. And I've got a Oh, what else do I have? The arm on 18. So I select the port number first and then arm motor, done. 
Okay, for the time being, I'm going to leave that as is. Okay, so with the robot configuration done, I should have had it on big screen the whole time, um, I'm going to go ahead and click on the main program. And <clears throat> in here, we're going to first set up a really, really quick and dirty autonomous. So uh, by clicking on this little help icon over here, it brings up the command help, and then there's another tab here for the command reference. So let's click on that, and we're going to take a look at motion. So just as a demonstration of something really, really simple here, um, we're going to set up our autonomous, where it's just going to turn on the drive wheels, make it go for a little while, then stop. And if you guys have used the competition templates in the past, you can see what we've got cooking here. We've got the pre-autonomous, and I'm going to go right in here into the autonomous. And I think I can collapse that and make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so within my autonomous, we want to make certain that we don't delete the beginning and end curly braces. And a couple of things we need to configure in here is the stopping method. So left front wheel dot set stopping. All right, and we can choose brake mode um, or coast. I guess for a drivetrain, maybe a coast might be better, but you guys can experiment with it. You have a few options here. You have brake, coast, and hold. So set that up, and we're going to go to the left rear wheel dot set stopping. Oops, I put a comma in there by accident. Set stopping, and again, coast. The right front wheel dot set stopping. Coast. And the right rear wheel, same thing. and they have to end with the semicolon. So all that did is just set up how the motors are going to be stopping when given a stop command. This is not telling them to stop, it is just saying when you're given a stop command, how are you going to react? Either um, braking, coasting, or holding. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is to set up the, um, the velocity of the motors. So you set velocity, and here, this is the speed of the motors. So how fast are they going to be going? 50%. And again, you can tweak that later. And I think I'm just going to control C, copy and paste this a bunch of times, and then change the, change the motors respectively. So here's my left rear wheel. And here we'll get into the right front wheel. and the right rear wheel. Okay, so <clears throat> when given a command to turn, this is gonna be what sets the speed of the motor. Next up, we need to tell the motor to go forward. So in here, um, this is just, let's see, like left front wheel dot spin. And then we could do, um, Forward is fine. Okay. And we can set up a bunch of these. Copy and paste them. All right. We're going to do something a little bit different on the fourth motor here. Wow, that's trippy. It highlights all of them at the same time. So left rear wheel dot spin. And then we'll go the... Um, right front wheel dot spin. So that turned on all of the motors. Um, now we're gonna do something, like I said, a little bit different with them. It, it turned on three of the four motors. The last motor is the only one we're gonna sit there and watch to see how long it's actually gonna go for and maybe set it up as a certain distance. So the one I haven't used yet is the, uh, the right rear wheel. And dot spin, oh, I'm sorry. Let's see, this is gonna be a spin four, dot spin four. 
and here you can see we can enter a value and how many units so let's say I wanted to go for a couple of revolutions so I could do 720 and then the, the, the units can either be degrees or turns so this is 720 degrees that looks just fine okay so that is going to turn all three all four motors on but it's going to sit here and this one is going to spin four I mean it's going to wait for that last right rear wheel to get up to 720 degrees now we got to stop all of the motors and that's just a stop command oops I don't know what the deal was there okay so all four motors are going to need to have a stop command Again, there's a difference between um, set stopping, which is just going to set how it's going to stop, and the actual stop command tells it to stop. So let's see, we're going to go through here and set the right rear wheel. The left front wheel. And the last one the right rear wheel. Okay, so that is a really quick and dirty autonomous uh, using this VEX code V5 text. And um, this is the way you'd have to do it if you had a four wheel, four motor drive compared to the, like I said, the drive train commands that are built into this are only good if you have a two motor drive. So what we've done here is to um, set the, how it's going to stop, set what speed it's gonna run at, then in here, we're going to set the uh, uh, direction it's going to travel for. Notice that three of them are telling it to go forward. The fourth one is actually going to sit there and wait until that last wheel gets there. The effect is that all four wheels start at the same time. And technically, you're only watching the right rear wheel to make sure that that stops. And then we give it a stop command. Okay, so now into the user control section. Um, you're going to want to have the user control code be placed within the while one loop. So I'm going to delete uh, a lot of the comments there. So here's the beginning and end of the while one you can see highlighted. And then let's take a look at how that's going to run. Um, we got to set a whole bunch of motors here. So we got the left front wheel dot set the velocity. Set, set the velocity of this as um, related to a controller thing. So one of the things we can do over here in the command reference, if I collapse this and find the sensing piece, we can find in here where it talks about the um, controllers. So I'm gonna scroll down. Oy. It's so hard to grab the edge of this thing. It's really tiny little scroll bar. They need to improve upon that, I think. Make it a little bit bigger. So what I'm looking for is the uh, controller axes, controller axes position. And when you find something in the command reference, you can hit this little copy icon. And then, so in here, when we set the velocity, we're gonna be looking for it to be relative to a controller axis. Now the axis is highlighted in red here, which means it's invalid. And we can choose, um, I'm gonna set this up. So the left side is controlled by axis three position that looks good and then um, the second part of that is going to be the percent um, so what it's going to do is the left front wheels velocity how fast it goes is going to be set by the reading the control axes number three and then uh, expressed as a percentage and that should be the line that we need so we need to do this for a whole bunch of times for each wheel. So left front wheel, we'll go to the left rear wheel, and that'll be the same axes expressed as a percentage. Now the right front wheel is gonna have a different axis that sets its speed, and that's going to be looking at my controller axis number two. All right, right front wheel and then the right rear wheel. 
and that's going to be set up with axis number two as well. Okay, now that just sets the speed. The uh, problem with this is it doesn't actually do anything. The setting actions just Again, like I said, it sets it to a particular speed, but it doesn't make it do anything. It doesn't have any motion associated with it. So the next thing we're going to need to do here is go to right front wheel dot spin. And this we can choose a forward or reverse, whatever it is. And we need to do that for all of them. left front wheel dot spin and I think because I reversed these in the software earlier in the configuration I'm just gonna go with all forwards so the left rear wheel dot spin okay so uh, that should do it. That gives me a very simple autonomous and a very simple driver control. And at this point, I'm going to download it to the robot and give it a quick test here. Building was successful. And uh, <clears throat> in my joystick here, I want to go to where it says programs, hit the A button, find the one that says, you know, whatever uh, template I'm using, Clawbot template one, hit A, and here I'm going to do a timed run so that I get a sample of both the autonomous as well as the um, driver control. So select timed run, hit A to start it. I get a vibrating countdown. Three, two, one, go. I got four motors that are spinning for 720 degrees. And now I've got to wait about 10 seconds for the autonomous period to end on my joystick. And then in a few seconds here, I'll be able to start up and run the driver control and test out my individual axes. So now I'm in driver control, minute 45 seconds. I'm pushing very slowly forward on the right axis. Those motors are spinning. And the left axis, those motors are spinning. So that is a really, really basic program to get you guys started in a drivetrain using the competition template and um, getting an autonomous as well as a driver control to make your robot go. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and that it's useful for you. Take care and we'll catch you next time.